specific that you wanted to know about, or should I just cover some general stuff? Go over some basics. It's just been forever since I've done any platoon or squad leading, um, like years. Right, right. So I usually just like go over the like real basic stuff for like people that just started the game. Do you know how like to set up squads and to do squad descriptions and stuff like that? Yeah, I was uh, I was in um, oh what the heck, Angels of Death like four or five years ago. Okay, so I don't have to worry about that. And you know about, like, beacons? Uh, do you need, need a refresher on, like, construction stuff, like router running? I do not. I'm not familiar with router running. Okay, so I'll go ahead and go over that real quick, because essentially, once you know how to organize your platoons, i.e. I, to set up your squads to have a good tag and stuff like that, the, the next thing you need to think about for your squads are their logistics, like their spawn logistics. So the obvious thing is Sunderers, and, you know, you everyone knows how Sunderer works unless they're a brand-new player, so I'm not going to go over that. But you do kind of, when you're leading a platoon or squad, want to bear in mind where your people are placing their Sunderers because there are such a thing, there is such a thing as a bad Sunderer spawn at base. Um, but that's just very, that just requires you to play and know the bases. Uh Moving on from that are beacons, which the squad beacons, you know, you can only have one up per squad. If someone else from a squad puts one up, it overrides another beacon, and that is, the beacons are literally the only way to get into the overpop. So, beacons are important, but they are not essential. Um, yeah, now, yeah, like game says, beacons all override spawn influence, no longer router. Um... Beacons are kind of weird. They're, 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 I, I see them as more supplemental to the, the squad and the platoon spawn. Uh, you always want something plus beacons. So, you know, a sunder, bunch of sunder spawns plus beacons in the building or a uh, router and the, the top of the triple stack. They're, they're supplemental to the spawn. Grouters, how they work is it's a construction thing. And I'll, 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 actually, it's like the most simple construction thing. Uh, you need to spend like 3,000 certs to unlock everything you need to run a router. And what a router is, is they go out in their ant and they mine some cordium and they put a little base together. And out of that base, you can spawn something called a routing spire. And all once you have the routing spire built, all you have to do is walk up to it and hit E and they spawn a router into their inventory. Just like, you know, we have our guns and our beacons and our, and our tools and and whenever they fly to a base that the platoon is attacking, they can place the router down uh, where any of the way they want in that base, as long as it's not next to another router. And your squad, or your squad, and your platoon can spawn on that. It's basically a you know, tap your finger. There's a spawn there. It's not like it doesn't go through overpop like beacons do. So you do need beacons to get the re the rest of your platoon there because often what will happen is you'll say we're going to this base next and your router runner or runners will get there first and they'll put a router down. The first, you know, four or five guys will spawn on it no problem, but then overpop will start to happen and they won't see the router anymore. And those four or five guys that spawn need to place beacons down to get the rest of the platoon in. So it's basically routers are a very good way to defend bases where the regular spawn is terrible. And they're also a very good way to basically leapfrog from base to base to base. Because for a router runner, getting another router set up is as easy as just redeploying back to their base, grabbing a router from the spire, and then after boosting their scythe to wherever you're the... the and that's basically the, the basics of uh, router running. You, do you feel like you understand it better now? Yeah, that definitely makes more sense. Yeah, I mean, I guess that is a good distinction, games. Um, the router looks exactly like a like a like a teleport icon. Like the it, it's it, it doesn't have a specific icon. It just on the left it will say router. But if you know where you're going, and if you if you know where the platoon waypoint is, uh, suddenly a spawn appears that looks like a normal spawn. That's probably the router. <laughs> um, moving on from that, we have uh, things like. Managing your platoons. So a lot of the time, uh, you know, I always say 
be positive and be informative. Um, especially with an SKL, but I would imagine within a lot of the other outfits in the game, like a lot of the focus is to make sure that we get new players in and come with the game. So it's pretty easy to fall back into jargon that maybe only we would understand. Like, uh, I mean, there are people in my platoons that get confused when we say baby gates, when we're talking about these things, uh, they're hard light barriers, but we call them baby gates. So uh, it's really easy if you start using like powerhouse callouts or uh, callouts for, uh, you know, d oh, we got guys breaching dubs, you know, stuff like that. That can confuse people. And I'm not saying don't use callouts. I'm just saying every now and then you might want to explain what the hell's going on just in case half the platoon are brand new players or returning players like you, Jeru. Um, there are a lot of times... In I will explain just the function of routers to people that might not know what construction is, um, why we skip some bases and don't destroy them, like player bases, and why we destroy some of them. And it usually depends entirely on whether there's an orbital strike uh, there or not. Uh, there, so there, basically it's just be positive and be informative. Like, be informative for the newer or returning players and be positive just because your platoon will achieve more for you if you are not being a defeat. About it because I mean it's easy to get down in the dumps and be a defeatist, especially when a double team happens and it's a one v one v one. I'll tell you right now, a double team will happen. <laughs> it will happen to you. It happens you know, thirds of the time, one third of the time. There'll be some days where you feel like the platoon or the the platoon just keeps running into double teams and kind of have to keep the mood of the I. Um, another thing is to, and this kind of depends on your comfort level with this type of stuff, but to encourage people to experiment with certain things. Um, there are a lot of people that play this game for years that never really seriously consider the max uh, as, a, as a class, even though it's, uh, it's the max suit is like quite literally a force multiplier. Uh, if you have like a half squad holding a point, you know, say, say we're on a three point base and, you know, uh, alpha squad's holding a point and you only really have half the squad there if two of those people are maxes it's more like you have eight to ten people there because maxes just have so much more health so much more resilience so much more uh, outgoing firepower that they can really uh help in certain situations where you need numbers if you cannot physically get more people to where you need them then the max suit will um something similar can be said for say bringing a mag rider into a base where mag riders can actually get in, which is more, more bases mag riders can get in dollars or vanguards because mag riders, their whole thing is the, so it's always a good idea to kind of take note of what specialties that you have in your platoon. Uh, if you see people in mag riders, when you're taking a base you know, maybe encourage them to get into, uh, into the base to help the infantry. If you see people struggling to hold a certain point, maybe suggest to those people back suit. Fairly simple things like that, but uh, the I guess the main point there is just just be aware of what's going on. Be aware of uh, of of the strengths and weaknesses of your platoon and try to help out. Um, a lot of the times, I will ask, "Do we have anyone willing to run routers?" If no one is running routers, because I think, in my personal opinion, routers are almost um, it should be common knowledge to everyone because they go good, hold, and defend certain bases. Uh, just because having a spawn that isn't beacons just at your beck and call at any specific point in the base, very strong. So a lot of times when I'm running a, a platoon, other than asking for, do I have any volunteers for squad leads, I will say, do I have anyone that willing to one run routers because they're just so important. Uh, do you, does anyone have any questions thus far? No, it seems pretty clear. Cool, cool. All right, and now, uh, normally I would also explain the, like, hierarchy of SKL and how, like, you go up in rank and stuff like that. Uh, do you need a refresher on that, Jerud, or do you understand, like, how the ranks work? I had uh, briefly read through the handbook, so... The handbook is a little outdated, so I will add to that by saying that 
Broodlord is accessible to anyone, uh, which will give you access to anvils and discounts. You just have to go to the Academy News tab on the Discord and fill out a, f a very brief form to sign up for the Officers Academy. And once you sign up for the Officers Academy, you will get approved by the Broodlord. And from then on, uh, it's just up to your performance within the Officers Academy to see how quickly you get to Swarm Lords. And Swarm Lords are the ones that have all the access to, you know, Orbital strikes and citadel shields. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. That doesn't sound too horrible. I remember doing uh, an officer academy for a different outfit way back. Yeah, it's not. It's what whatever you're imagining. It's much more. It's much more casual than that. It's basically just you know we're trying to just give everyone uh, a place where they can. Discuss tactics, discuss an alert where they won or discuss an alert where they lost, attend a couple trainings, you know, just get, get mentorship and uh, understand just what SKL expects and nothing crazy. It doesn't, it's not school. <laughs> you don't have to attend certain classes every week or uh, it's, it's, it's just a way for us to kind of organize and help the people rise in the ranks and get asset perms and stuff like that. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Right, let me check my notes real quick, otherwise I'll probably just keep this pretty brief. I'm going to talk briefly about the winning of an alert, though that's not as important to me more than just have, making sure that your squad is organized and uh, and platoon is organized and that everyone is having a good time. If you have like a positive, informative at, like at, atmosphere within the platoon and everyone is having fun, you're doing well. Like we don't, we don't really care if you win an alert. That's kind of up to you how sweaty or casual you are. But I will say that if you are trying to win the alert, the best advice I can give you is to not get stuck into any farms unless the farm is beneficial to you. So if you're at a situation where you're only, you've been pushing down this one line, this line, and you've been taking base after base after base, let's use um, Hassan as, as an example since Hassan is up. So if you're like in the bottom left and you just like say took Roothouse Distillery, you're moving on the Jahari Cove, you take Ghan and Southern Crossing, you probably don't want to go into Ghana and Tech because Ghana and Tech is a really long cap. Uh, depending on how many people you are, it have it, it could it could ease out. It's the situations like that where you go down an easy lattice and then you the tech plant like nations to find big beefy stronghold bases. You need to be prepared when you send your platoon into that because you want you want to maintain momentum. So it's a good idea to try. Need to be aware that fights like that. Once you're going down a lattice, you you are you're building up a good zerg. You have a lot of armor that's down from base to not uh, having to redeploy. It's okay to go into Gondon Tech, but you need to recognize the that starts turning into arm. If population starts to even out, start getting pushed off the point regularly. The recognize that a farm is not good unless you were went by a healthy mark. If you're at Gone and Tech Plant and Banu hold 40% of the map, it's okay to stay at Gone and Tech Plant because you are holding up a sizable amount of their population just defending against you. And any population that is defending against you cannot attack you elsewhere. So in those instances, a farm is good. If you're trying to get territory and, and the farm is not in your benefit, you just need to recognize when it's becoming a farm and when and that you need to redeploy the platoon away. Uh, you're not always going to just be able to steamroll by this. You're going to have to pick and fight. Um, a lot of the times I will just go until we get we reach some kind of stopping point, whether we get hit by a farm or an armor column intercepts us or whatever. You just zerg down the line, and then once you're stopped, you're stopped. Immediately recognize it and redeploy away. Attack elsewhere. Uh, the best way to win an alert is constant pressure. Uh, you attack, attack, attack until you're stopped, and then redeploy elsewhere, attack again. It might be tempting to say, 
okay, we're not going to be able to take Gon and Tex, so let's fall back to Jahari Cove. But that means that all you are doing is giving up the initiative to the enemy. So they are going to defend Gon and Tech, and then they are going to go south and attack you at Jahari Cove. And then you might be in the situation where they are holding your pop up so that they, they, you cannot attack them. Don't fall for stuff like that unless you just really, really need that base. In that type of situation, fall back from Gon and Tech, play elsewhere, and attack, you know, or Drexler, or, you know, one of the Hurricane uh, Lattice things on the NC. Attacking is usually the the right answer. Uh, you can be deployed to defend stronghold bases, but I would not suggest you defend every single base. As long as you are taking something, it's okay to lose something else. And I think that's about all I'm, I care to talk about as far as the alerts go. It's very variable. There's there's so many variables that go into an alert that there's no there's no formula for for winning them. But generally speaking, avoid farms, attack where you can, hold up as much of their population when you need to, as uh, if you're doing well. And uh, Jeroot, do you have any specific questions? We would this would be the time where I would move into the Q and A, and everyone would have a chance to ask ask some questions. So if you have any any questions at all regarding leadership related things, I'll I'll answer them. Uh, honestly, that that's a that's a pretty decent refresher. The the more interesting thing with me is just uh, the time during the time I was missing. Basically, construction became a thing, so uh, that was the only thing I was really behind on. I would say. Yeah, generally speaking, construction, and, and I don't want to, I, I like construction, I, I want to say this up, up front because I'm about to bash construction pretty badly, I have everything unlocked for construction, I enjoy doing it, that being said, generally speaking, just ignore construction, like enemy construction that is, uh, unless the enemy base that you see has one of those orbital strike beacons, which is like that, it's like that spire-looking thing on the map with a giant yellow ring around it that tells you that there's a orbital strike beacon there. If they have that, and your platoon's not really doing anything, and that orbital strike beacon, anything in that yellow circle, they could hit with an orbital strike. Basically, if that orbital, if that yellow circle is kind of like touching some things that you don't want an orbital to be freely dropped into, then I guess you can take an armor column over there and destroy the base. But Literally, like, mo nine times out of ten, just ignore the base. Like, the enemy bases are not that big of a deal. The ones in your way on the road won't take long to destroy. That's the only, those are the only ones that you'll have to destroy, or the ones they literally put on the road to try to slow down your column. But the only real, like, force-multiplying thing that come from a base are routers. A router, and a router base you can put up in two minutes. Like, the, there are plenty of times where I ha run routers for a platoon, and I'll just spawn an ant from a warp gate, get 10,000 cordium by ant, and it, that's literally all you need to start outer base. It's like three build. But like the big, the big massive bases might look impressive, but they're really not that important uh, as far as the alert goes. Like unless a, a, a outfit is really making use of the vehicle spawner there. But generally speaking, you can almost freely ignore any bases. And if you're unsure, you can always ask in the platoon. Maybe that base is worth but nine times out of ten, I would say base. Yeah, all right, that makes sense. Because there's not, there's not a ton that the construction bases can do. Like I said, they can build, like, a vehicle or an air spawner that their friendlies can pull air for free from, which can be annoying uh, in a fight where you're... It, when you're running like an armor platoon or an air ball, then maybe destroy that base just so their air and armor capacity is lessened. Uh, the only threat to people taking bases, orbital strikes, and even is you only do like one orbital strike every like once the one's done, done for a while, um, and it only has like a very limited range around it. And we ha usually have people that go and hunt router bases because router bases literally are just a silo, a routing spire, a spawn tube, and a, a light air terminal. It, it, it looks nothing like the massive bases that you see. Those, those are like, router bases are usually like little compact things that they try to hide up against mountains or under trees. They use stealth eyes. But it's all pretty simple. Uh, I would I would advise if you if you have an interest in it to get into router running at some point because I think everyone, because it's one of the most important um, for the easily the most important thing that came to production 
It costs about 3,000 certs, so it's a little bit of a cert sink. If you ever have a search free, I would advise you get into it. Yeah, it seems like a pretty worthwhile investment of 3,000 certs in all reality. Three weapons or the ability to deploy people wherever you want. Yeah. I will say that the 3,000 certs that I listed is only for the router base. Um, the light, you do get the light, the light air terminal out of that 3,000 certs, but it's literally, it's, it's 500 certs for the routing spire, 500 certs for the spawn tube, and, the, and 2,000 certs for the light air terminal. Uh, if you want a vehicle terminal or shield gates or mod, like modules that shield your things and uh, eye shield and all that stuff, that's way more certs. But it's just 3,000 certs to be able to spawn in your base, grab a router, spawn a scythe, and afterburner to wherever. So you, I, I do, you do get aircraft out of that, but you, you're not going to get armor, and you're not going to get like all the fancy shields and stuff. It's it's literally just what I was saying that uh, where like if we were on this map and I was placing a router base, I would literally probably put a, a silo right here under this tree, a spawn tube right here under this tree, a routing spire right here under this. Fairly poke a light air terminal out of, out of branches to where my scythe isn't going to be caught up by the branch, and then I have just like my little covert. Uh, routing base. I can sh if if we're ever playing in live, I'll just sh I can just show myself because I do a lot of router running. But that is much different. The giant mega bases that use walls and the high shields. The routing bases are more elf the Agnes over actually being a structure. But. That's wrapping up the training for today. Thanks for coming, Jeroot. I'm glad someone came. Uh, everyone else is busy with HK Ops and the regular platoon, so feel free to go get into that while it's still going on. That's probably what I'm going to go do, honestly. Yeah, the HK stuff's very quality if you like high, higher levels of play, and I'm, I think Bjorn has a regular platoon up, so your cup runneth over with options. Thanks for joining us.